Welcome, 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 ladies and gentlemen, to Crossing Paths Television Ministry. My name is Don Reed Sr. from Hermitage, Pennsylvania, and so glad you tuned in today. You know, I have to be careful what I'm saying today. I'm between two pastors, you know, and uh, they just correct me every once in a while, especially the one on my right. But it's so nice to have somebody that comes up and pastors. Crossing Paths has been a ministry, we're not a church, is to get the people out to the churches. So that's what every been my since I've been saved there over almost 42 years ago. So I thank you for tuning in to us and helping us out, supporting Amen. us. You know, when you like your seven dollars a month or seventy dollars a month, or like Matt says, seven hundred a month, but we just go by the support. So we are so excited. We're on 35 states, almost 200 cable companies, and it's exciting to have a new guest on here today. So. I'm going to turn it over to Ron here, and Ron, uh, we crossed paths with a lot of people, but I guess you told me this guy's got a Amen. testimony too. He's a good man. Yeah. Listen, the first thing that I want to say is if you have some friends or family members, please tell them, go right now to the phone and dial in. Uh, Pastor Matt is just a good friend of mine, an awesome man of God, and he's going to have some good truth to share today. So please tell your friends and family to tune into the show. I'd like to take this opportunity to, to introduce Pastor Matt Schendler, and um to the show today. I know you're you're in for a real treat. He's like I said, he's a personal friend of mine and I'm really interested to hear his testimony and what God has done in his life. So Matt, why don't you begin by telling us how you came to know the Lord or a little bit about your background? Sure. Uh, I grew up in Cleveland, Ohio. I was born in Cleveland, Ohio. And I went to Cleveland Baptist Church. Uh, as some people say, I was kind of born in the pew, uh, just going to church. Um, Early on in my life, my dad uh, had a different testimony. When I kind of started figuring out uh, what life was about, um, I started to realize some inconsistencies in my dad. My mom was a praying woman. My mom was involved in, in church. My dad was a Sunday school superintendent, but at the age of four or five, I couldn't quite figure it out. We'd be in a bar on Saturday night. Mm. My mom would go and get him. He was absolutely wasted. Um, he played pool and, and caroused around in the bars on Saturday night. And then on Sundays, we, he'd be the Sunday school superintendent. Yeah. And everybody thought my dad was the cool dad because he wore sunglasses inside the church. But at five years old, I figured out he had to because he couldn't stand the light. He was still hung over from the night before. Oh, yeah. And my parents started to have real big problems when I was five or six years old. And at six years old, I was in a Wednesday evening service and I was really having some struggles at six years old, just hearing the arguing between my parents. And I heard a message about Jesus Christ and how, uh, how Jesus Christ was safety, how Jesus Christ was our mm. tower, how Jesus Christ was our fortress, Amen. how he was our rock. And I heard that story that night and the pastor said, listen, every person that doesn't know this Jesus that I'm talking about will spend eternity in hell. Mm. And at six years old, that got my attention. And after the service, I went up to the pastor. He was greeting folks at the door, and I tugged on his, on his coat, and I said, Pastor, I, I need to be saved. Mm. And he bent down right there, and I was actually small enough to put on his knee at six years old. Oh. Uh, it don't look like it now, but uh, at six years old, he put me on his knee, took his big old uh, preacher's Bible there, and he, he showed me how to be saved. This was in the Baptist church? The Baptist church, they Cleveland the Baptist Lord. Church in Cleveland, Ohio. Oh, they preached the word. Hey, Pastor, hey them Baptists know how to go after souls, brother. Huh? <laughs> Pastor, uh -huh. Pastor Roy Thompson led oh, me to wow. the Lord. Yeah. And uh, Pastor Roy ended up uh, retiring from there and, and was a missionary in the Philippines and did great work for the Lord uh, just so many years. He's passed away now. But uh, he led me to the Lord that night, August the, 6th, uh, August the 5th, 1985. Now, let me get this. You're because a lot of pastors listen to the show, and, but you were six years old. And see, we know people now that take, well, take the children out of the service and they go rushing them up. But it's six years old. See, that's why I want to encourage parents and pastors alike that your children, 
I mean, here's a man at, at six years old, accepted Jesus, and now he's a pastor, pastor of a successful church. It's six years old. Yeah, it, it, for me, I, I even feel the same way about our own church. Um, we, that service at six years old, we were in a Wednesday night service getting rewards for our clubs, and we said verses, and they'd give us badges and all that stuff. Well, the pastor got up that night, and he preached. He preached the Bible wow. and salvation and the gospel truth that Wednesday night. And sometimes, you know, when children are in the service, you shy away from uh, maybe a harder subject yeah, of that. Right. But the Bible says we have to come to the Lord with the faith of a child. Good, yeah. And, and I, I tell people either people need to come as a child uh, or they need to come uh, with the faith of a child. And if somebody's 50 years old and successful, and I've met, I met a gentleman one day and I said, man, I want you to know the Lord Jesus as your savior. He said, man, I'm successful. I've got a, I've got a business. I've got a house that I own, my wife, mm. kids. I got two cars in the driveway. He said, what do I need Jesus for? And I said, you know what your problem is? I said, you don't know Jesus as a child. You don't know Jesus as, uh, as that faith of a child, this childlike faith. You tell a child, don't go in the road, and they say, okay. Amen. Um, you tell a 40-year-old, don't go in the road, and you got to tell them why and how and, right. and yeah. by what means and, and explain six different ways why you shouldn't go to the road and stand in the middle of the road. And, you know, when you tell a child, Jesus Christ died for you. Wow. Jesus Christ is the answer. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. No yeah. man cometh unto the Father but by me. Yeah, sometimes people, I mean, you... Uh, you grew up with not too good of a background family, right? Yes, sir. And 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 uh, did you uh, uh, and you play you uh, escape that alcohol and gambling background like some other people or sexual? What tell me about that too? As you progressed, was it football, basketball, anything in sports? Sure. Uh, when I was in high school, I was I played three sports. I played basketball, soccer, and baseball. Um, I played a little bit of football, but just uh, on the side, I wasn't able to play competitively. Um, but I, I enjoyed sports. I love sports. One of the things I thanked my mom for was um, she understood who my dad was. You know, at seven years old, I was mixing rum and cokes for my dad mm -hmm. in our house. And after the divorce, my mom, and I resented her at the time for it um, because I, I love my dad and I, I uh, admired my dad and I didn't understand all that was going on and what he had done. So I resented my mom for keeping me away from my dad. But through my teenage years, my mom was very strict. She didn't let me spend weekends or she would be very guarded with my time with my dad. And man, at 38 years old, I'm, I'm so thankful she Amen. did that yeah, totally. because my dad drank and my dad smoked and my dad's been married four or five times. I love my dad. I sure. honor my father. Sure, I, sure. I'm thankful for him and, and what he is uh, today. But at the same time, I'm thankful that my mom had the discernment right. and the, the spiritual boldness to keep me away from that stuff as a teenager. My mom got remarried, and then uh, through my teenage years, I played sports. I, I enjoyed sports. I kind of, for a time, lived for it because it was kind of my escape. Um, and then I went to college and played soccer, and I played basketball. And that's why I went to college. Um, but God had other plans. Um, when I got to college, he, he just turned my world upside down. I was miserable. Um, I wasn't finding any joy. Uh, sports were harder in college uh, yeah, than they yeah, were in yeah. high school. Yeah. I was the big man on campus in high school. Uh, I got to college. I had to actually try and go to practices three times a day and, and go to classes full time. And I, I was kind of miserable uh, in, in 1997. Christmas of 1997, I actually woke up at 2 o'clock in the morning one time. I was working two jobs, playing sports, um, and I was th two or three o'clock in the morning. I woke up and I was absolutely confused. I didn't even know who I was, where mm -hmm. I was, um, and I had a I had a nervous breakdown. Um, and I was and you weren't drinking anything. Like no, that. sir. I, okay. I um, I was uh, and I share my testimony with my church. I was addicted to pornography um, and had some secret sins um, that I wasn't really sharing with anybody. But it was it was absolutely wrecking my life. Um, I was financially, I wasn't successful at all. Um, sports were not fulfilling me. I couldn't keep a girlfriend for longer than two hours. Um, you know, it just, it, it just was uh, really, really tough during so, that time. So you're like, like you know, a lot of people don't want to admit it, you know, but you all have childhood problems or could have started when you're younger because of your dad or so forth like sure. that, you know, and it comes out in later years, you know. So 
many many a times we I don't know about Ron here, but we grow up in an atmosphere. So the Holy Spirit had a hold of you, thank God, at the age of six, okay? Yeah, praise the Lord. And, and you went awayward, so we call it away, right? And I, uh, Jeremiah 17, 10, that's what I wanted to start out with. That God said, I, uh, Jeremiah says, I search the hearts of men. Men. So God, search your heart. When did you make this commitment now? What's the name of your church? Bible Baptist Church. All right, now tell me, when was the time now? You, weren't, you were not committed to the Lord now as far as being a pastor yet, right? Correct. Tell me what happened. What year that was it? So nine, Christmas of 1997, um, I was 19 years old. And I had three or four years there. I just was miserable and, and trying everything, you know, just trying to, trying to find something that made me happy. And um, I, I went behind the dorm of my, of my college and we had cassettes back in those days. So I took a box of, box of cassettes and, and it sounds silly to probably some people, but in that box was everything that kind of had control of me at the time. Yeah. Music and letters from people and stuff. And there was a, a, an embankment off the back of our dorm and I just chucked all that stuff over the bank. I probably get yeah. in trouble for littering now, but uh. um, but I just chucked all that stuff over the side of that cliff. And at 19 years old, I said, Lord, if you will, if you'll help me, um, and you'll be with me, and you'll guide me and guard me, I'll give you my life. Amen. I had went to college to be a high school history teacher, but I knew when I signed up for those classes, I knew I was supposed to be a preacher. I, I said to the Lord at the age of 15, before Amen. I rebelled, before I kind of did what I wanted to do at the age of 15. I told the Lord I'd be a preacher and I ran from that. And at 19, on that day, uh, Christmas of 97, I told the Lord I'd, I'd be a preacher. I'd turn back and do that. Wow. So uh, I started getting involved in uh, youth, youth ministry, troubled teenagers, inner city kids in Knoxville, Tennessee. That's where I started my ministry as a youth pastor. And then in 2002, me and my wife with a one month old child moved up here to Western Pennsylvania and uh, the Disney song, A Whole New World, uh, mm -hmm. takes good meaning right there because Western Pennsylvania was a whole new world for us. We went from the inner city to rural Pennsylvania, and uh, God's been working on our lives ever since. How about your wife's background? Was she Baptist? She was. Uh, she was born in Chicago, Illinois, and I met her down in Tennessee. She's come from a broken home also. We both come from broken homes. Yes. Um, and uh, so she... Uh, had a kind of a winding road to get to, to get to college, but she had a godly father. Her dad was just a, a great man, guarded her all her life. And uh, so she got to college and that's where we met. And then we moved up here in 2002 uh, to be the youth pastor at Bible Baptist Church. And two and a half years after we got there, our pastor died of liver cancer. And uh, so we kind of didn't know what we were doing in March of 05. We were kind of in limbo. We, we, we were just kind of wandering a little bit and not knowing what. I felt like God wanted me to pastor, senior pastor at church someday, but I was only 26. And uh, in July of 2006, um, uh, to, uh, July of 2005, I'm sorry, uh, the church asked us to be the pastor at 26 years old. That was not in my plans, <laughs> but God, God rewrote the script. Uh, I tell our church, he went off script and uh, when he goes off Amen. script, he knows better than we do. And, and so in July of 2005, I became the senior pastor of our church. So you've been there for about 12 years now? Uh, as the pastor, 15 yeah. total, but uh, 12 years this July. Mm, so what's happening in your church now? What are you guys doing? And we was talking about some community activities you guys have and outreach. And sure, at, right from the start, it started to grow pretty quickly. Um, new, it was new, it was, we were making some changes. So it grew pretty quickly. But it wasn't it wasn't good growth. It wasn't it wasn't godly growth. Um, there was a lot of people and a lot of problems, um, a lot of backbiting. Mm. You know, I know in a lot of churches, and I don't know about other denominations necessarily, but I know in a lot of Baptist churches I've been in, there's so much complaining and griping, and I think it's one of those huge problems we have like in churches. Cancer. Yeah. It is. So in January of 2010, I started to preach a series of messages on a cancer in the church. It's wow. amazing you just said that. Yeah. But I started to preach a six-week series on the cancer in the church, and we lost 110 people over the next nine months. Wow. And uh, I had another nervous breakdown. Brother. <laughs> um, I just uh, I didn't know what to do. I, I had asked the Lord to clean the church. Either have, you know, In my mind, everybody was going to get right with God, right. but yeah. uh, 110 people left. Um, in one day, we have a Christian academy, and on one day, we had, uh, s s uh, I think it was 10 families call, 
and we lost $22,000 in uh, tuition for our Christian Academy in 15 minutes. Because they all preaching the word. Uh, preaching the word. Uh, they were offended at the word. And I could I look back on it now, and of course, you know, at that age, I could have done something different and some things yeah. different, but it was of the Lord. And so from 2010 to now, uh, we've just been rebuilding the foundation and, and rebuilding the church and asking the Lord to bless. And in 2015, we started a or 2014, we started a ministry called Community Care. And community care is simply uh, a ministry where we go door to door in our community of Latrobe and Derry and Ligonier and Greensburg, Blairsville, and we knock on doors and ask people how we can pray for them. Wow. And we take prayer requests. And I'm telling you, some yeah, of the beautiful. things that people yeah. share with us is absolutely amazing. Yeah. Uh, some of the things they pour their heart out about. And we've taken a little over 200 prayer requests in from our community, and we've seen 150 of those answered. Um, and people come and they, they, they come to church and they'll say their name and I'll say, hey, I've been praying for you. Uh -huh. And as we've been praying for them and they see an answer to their prayer, I just got a call the other day from a gentleman. His throat cancer is completely healed in two months. Um, we've been praying for him for two months and his throat cancer is gone. That is awesome. And uh, God's just doing a work. Um, we have a website, prayerandcare.com, and people just flood that prayerandcare.com with prayer requests, and I will pray for anybody. And uh, one pastor said, oh, I want to start that. We need some new people in our church. I said, if you start this ministry with the idea to build your church, you start it for the wrong reason. Mm. Um, the Bible says in Matthew, it says to uh, show your good works before men, uh, to, to let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works right. and glorify your Father which is right. in heaven. Yeah. So many times we think our good works is running a bus route or mm. teaching a Sunday school or I sing in the choir or whatever. Uh, the Bible says, let your light so shine before men. That's not in the four walls of the church. I think one of the problems in the church today is we're closed in our four walls. We think the church is our building. Amen. We right. got to get out in the community. Amen. And we just, I just taught our church over the last two or three years, get out in the community. Let's, let's let them know we care. You know, you know, Ron, well, you told me how powerful he was, you know, and I'm, I'm so excited sitting here because, you know, I just get excited when Someone like you, you know, I've asked a lot of Presbyterians, Methodists, some of them don't, pastors just don't want to, I don't know how they can refuse to be on TV when share say, well, what have I got to say? <laughs> One pastor, I said, I don't even have a testimony. I said, well, if you didn't drink and gamble and smoke and do what I did, you got a testimony. I told him on a Friday, Monday, he'd come up and he said, you put me under so conviction, I'll be on your show. <laughs> but see, you know, how did you cross paths with him? Because you... And you're, and you're, you're awesome. Th this is just what we were talking about out in the lobby that I said, Matt said, how really did we meet? And one day I was driving down the road on my motorcycle and God told me, I knew he was there and he knew I was there, but we really never officially met. Now here I am on my motorcycle <laughs> and he said, just go meet him. So I said, okay, I'm on my bike. I had my jeans on and I just go walking in there, right? Yeah. In his church. Yeah. I walk right. Yeah. And I, I, he came in the door. And, uh, and, and of course, as Baptist, man, he's, he's on a motorcycle, he's tattooed up. I thought, who is this guy, man? I'm going to minister to him. And half hour later, he ministered to me. You, you didn't know he was a pro football player? I, well, he shared his testimony with me. And uh, that day we got down to my office on our knees and he prayed yeah. for me. He prayed over me in my oh, office. Lord. And God knit our hearts together that day. Yeah. He's, my, he's my Jonathan. Yeah. Or I'm his day. I don't even know what I am, but he's awesome. I like what you said about outside the church, you know, I mean, I grew up and I, I had pornography problems. We all have, a lot of people don't want to admit it. You just said what you did. You grew up and knows that. Absolutely. You know, there's somebody out there that can get help, you know, and I say this honestly, people know me. I'm glad there's no Baptists in heaven, no Presbyterians, no Catholics, no Methodists, just believers. That's Amen. right. You know Amen. why? Amen. Because, oh, you got long hair or you got this or got that or you make, you're using makeup or, I mean, that would be so boring. But my heaven is not boring. That's right. My Jesus is not boring because if he can do what he did for me involved in all the things I was involved in and my brother here, you know, and the vibrancy that I see in him. And if you're in that particular area, is it Latrobe area? Yes, sir. And you're looking for a church. There's the church, the Baptist church. You know, it's, it's, not, it's not the church people. It's Jesus Christ. 
that changed my life. Amen. That changed his life. I like at the age of six, right? Man, love it. How many, a lot of people say, well, how can the age of, I've seen a lot of guys at the age of six or eight or 10 got saved, you That's know? That's right. And then backslapped or got in some things like you did, we all did, right? Absolutely. But thank God for John 3.3 3, where Jesus said, you gotta be born again. That's, That's the right. Baptist thing. That's Billy Graham. <laughs> That's Billy Graham when I was a drunk and a gambler. I'm on coming home. I've just got done losing $10,000 of my wife and committing adultery and everything. And I turn on the TV and there's Billy Graham. And my wife's going to the club and I'm sitting there and I'm drinking a bottle of beer and I'm crying, which I wouldn't let anybody know, yeah. you know, cause, and I'm running around, I'm, I'm, I'm having all kinds of things that's wrong, you know. And, I, and so some plant and some water, God, God gives the increase. Amen. Isn't that the truth? Amen. Don't you find that in your ministry? Oh, it's wonderful. I, I'm gonna go back to how we met and the friendship we've developed and we work together now. We do things to reach the community and I help his church as much as I can. He helps mine. And like you mentioned, we're doing a golf outing, and I want to encourage pastors today. I mean, this is just a prime example of what God could do, and our churches aren't that far apart. But we've developed this friendship and this unity, and that's what I think God wants to do in the body of Christ. Right? That's what you've taught me, Ron. Um, I grew up in, a, in the denomination of Baptists, and, and I'm not ashamed of that, but I am ashamed of some of the way that, that Baptists act, and I just mean that. And I'm sure it's in every denomination. Absolutely. Um, but I've I've just known over the last 12 years of my life that you've been my friend, that you've loved me for who I am. Um, it's never been about uh, my the name on my church or what I could do for you. Um, you've been my friend, and uh, you've introduced me to Don Senior, and I'm 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 humbled by that. Um, you've prayed for me. Uh, I've had some serious health issues over the last 10 years. And uh, the times that you've prayed for me, Amen. God's made a difference. I, I struggle with Crohn's disease, arthritis. Uh, I've had 73 kidney stones. Um, so I deal with a lot of physical issues. But I can, as I'm sitting here, I'm humbled that I know that Ron Kozar probably prays for me two or three times a mm. week. And he at least calls me once every other week Amen. and uh, asks me how I'm doing. And then every time it rings and I see his name on the phone, I think, man, I should have called him first. Uh, but he humbles me. He's so busy, but he loves me. And, he, and he's my true friend. And you've, been, you've saw Crossing Paths before TV program? Yes, program? sir. Uh, when Ron told me about it several months ago, uh, I've downloaded every program you've ever done that's on the Internet, at least, yeah. Yeah. and uh, watched them all. And, and I'm telling you, I've been fed by the programs, spiritually Amen. been fed by the programs. Thank you. That's um, it, just the, just the uh, wide range of testimonies you've had on here is absolutely amazing. Powerful. Um, and so it, it, they've just helped me because uh, I, I fight discouragement. I, I'm prone to discouragement. People say you're high energy. That's awesome. Um, high energy people get discouraged very easily <laughs> when things don't go our way. Uh, and so I, I fight discouragement. And so if, if you know, the Lord, I, I read books. I listen to good music. I watch Crossing Paths. I get on YouTube and let a preacher yell at me for a while. <laughs> I watch him on YouTube and all the things that God's done for him. Mm. So it, it's been amazing. God's really been blessing me through cross, Crossing yeah, Paths. You know, you said something that's so true, though, about I've been counseling like three pastors, you know, that have come to me and so forth in my prayer. See, I'm a pastor too, so we're human. Absolutely. There's things that in our lives that God has to wish out over time. We're Christians under construction, I call it. <laughs> That's good. Right? Now, could you look in that camera there and say a prayer? Maybe there's a family out there, somebody, somebody said, I've done this, I'm a pastor, I can never be forgiven. That's not true. Amen. Absolutely. And, and, and take a short minute there, if you will, and say a prayer into that Amen. A, a, a television program. Absolutely. Right? If you're struggling today with health issues, if you're struggling today with, uh, with addictive uh, habits, uh, let me pray with you and just understand that I can't forgive you, but God already has. Amen. And if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. Amen. Our Heavenly Father, we come as humbly as we know how. Oh, and we ask you to touch someone's life in the audience Amen. today. Maybe 10 years from now, somebody will pick oh, up this geez. program and they will need it at the moment of where they're at. Jeez. And Lord, I pray with all of my heart right now, as, as wicked as I am and as faulty as I am, I, I ask you to use this, this vessel, clean me, to use me for your purpose. Hallelujah. Lord, I pray for that person who might be discouraged today, Jeez. that person who's maybe in a hospital bed, 
that person who is uh, bedridden in their house, a person that's in a church that they feel is not feeding them. Lord, would you encourage their heart today? Would you move into their life and just help them today to find uh, that encouragement they need, not through uh, any person, but through you. And Lord, may you lead them to a Bible-believing church. May you lead them to a place with friends that, that can encourage them and help them and love them. We ask all of these things today in your precious son's name, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for our sins. And amen. 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 Uh, if you've been listening to this program, we have a telephone number. It'll be on the screen. Uh, we're on 35 different states, maybe around 200 cable companies. It's awesome. But most of all, this message is so clear today. It's so down to earth. There's three different pastors on the Amen. television here. You know, and I'm seriously, if we offended you, I'm glad because I'm going to tell you something. It's not that we want to hurt you. No. But when, when Billy Graham and the Baptist and Oral Roberts and some of these programs I used to watch and then go end up getting drunk and three days later and a pastor that was a Methodist pastor that planted the seed in my life and then I, I did the same thing too. They're, they're exactly people. Just remember, years ago, God did this for me. If he did it for me, he'll do it for you. Absolutely. And I got down on my hands and knees. That was 42 years ago this coming November. Mm. And I got up and I picked up the Bible put down the bottle, and I found out I haven't been right since because Hebrew said I'm a peculiar person, and so are you. But don't think that you have to quit immediately. No, there's no instant McDonald Christianity. It's a decision. John 1, 12, to all those who receive him, gave he power to become sons of God, even to those who believe on his name. Amen. That's simple. That's right. That's simple. And if you're there today, there's a telephone number. This pastor will come speak sometime if he's free in your church. He don't care. He come all the way up here. Amen. He, he said, yes, I love to hear when a pastor says, I love it, say yes. But out there today, you say yes to the Lord Jesus Christ. You heard that prayer. Telephone number is on the screen. If you want a Bible, we will send you a Bible. We've given over 50,000 Bibles free on Amen. our ministry Hallelujah. since I've been saved. Wow. We have a little pocket Bible I even gave him. We will send it to you. Put it here where your cigarettes used to be. That's where mine. Telephone number 724-981-7777 or 1-855-981-9777. God loves you and so do we. Hi, my name is Pastor Ronald Kozar. I'm a former NFL football player with the New England Patriots and also with the Detroit Lions. But I struggled with going blind and being overweight. So if you struggle with weight loss, issues with your eye, arthritis, pains in your neck, lower back, or your knees. I know that Freezor has helped me, and it could also help you. Please go to our website or dial that 1-800 number and get your order placed today.